On October 9, 2012, Taliban gunmen shot 15-year-old Malala Yousafzai in the head and neck. They boarded her school bus and singled her out. Her crime? To have written a blog about promoting education for girls and criticizing the Taliban. After 9-11, U.S. troops were sent to Kabul to get rid of Al-Qaeda, an international terrorist organization, along with the removal of the Taliban. During the battle, much of the Taliban fled to neighboring Pakistan, an ally of the United States, where they began to reestablish and spread their influence in the northern tribal regions, where the Pakistani government had little to no control. This is the story of Malala Yousafzai, a Pakistani school pupil and an education activist. The Taliban is an Islamic fundamentalist movement originally from Afghanistan. While in power, they enforce strict Sharia law, although leading Muslims have been highly critical of the Taliban's interpretations on Islamic law, especially regarding the treatment of women. Here the Taliban claim where they reside, their interpretation of the Quran, not the state, take precedent. At the age of 12, Malala began writing for the BBC under a pseudoname about what life is like living under Taliban rule. Malala wrote, the night was filled with noise of artillery fire, and I woke up three times. Today is the 15th of January, the last day before the Taliban's edict comes into effect, and my friend was discussing homework as if nothing out of the ordinary happened. She wrote about her passion for education and how she felt it was unfair to be living under such strict rules. Two years later, Malala described how many of her closest friends had moved away to the big city so they could go to school. Only 11 out of 27 students in her class were showing up to school in fear of the Taliban before her school was destroyed. A few years later, after giving interviews to major news outlets, the family began receiving donations and awards. The Pakistan media made Malala the de facto voice of Sawat. As she began to gain more confidence, she started speaking out more forcefully against the Taliban and their backwards view on the treatment of women and children. Along with the increased media attention, Malala also began receiving death threats from the Taliban. On October 9, 2012, Malala was shot savagely by two Taliban gunmen. Malala and her family were flown out to the United Kingdom for intensive care treatment and for their own safety. The news sent shockwaves across the globe. We told you about the 14-year-old girl in Pakistan who stood up against the Taliban so that girls could go to school. Malala Yousafzai has been using the attack meant to silence her to raise awareness about her cause. There is now a movement for Malala to receive the next Nobel Peace Prize. After making a remarkable recovery, her 16th birthday, July 12, 2013, was dubbed International Malala Day. To celebrate Malala Day, the global community came together to highlight the leading role that youth can play in enabling all children to get an education. Malala marked the day by giving her first public speech since the shooting and dedicated the importance of universal education at the United Nations headquarters in New York. In her address, Malala even addresses those who had shot her and their families. Dear sisters and brothers, I'm not against anyone. Neither am I here to speak in terms of personal revenge against the Taliban or any other terrorist group. I'm here to speak up for the right of education of every child. I want education for the sons and daughters of the Taliban and all the terrorists and extremists. I do not even hate the Talib who shot me. Even if there is a gun in my hand and he stands in front of me, I would not shoot him. This is the compassion that I have learned from Muhammad, the prophet of mercy, and Jesus Christ and Lord Buddha. This is, the, this is the legacy of change that I have inherited from Martin Luther King. 
Nelson Mandela, and Muhammad Ali Jinnah. This is... This is the philosophy of non-violence that I have learned from Gandhiji, Bacha Khan, and Mother Teresa. And this is the forgiveness that I have learned from my father and from my mother. And International youth leaders convened at the United Nations and in cities around the world in support of reaching the goal of having all children, especially girls, in school and learning by 2015 in support of the UN Secretary General Gordon Brown's initiative, Global Education First. I saw these slogans on, uh, on, on some of the walls, Malala for education and peace. And people are standing up and saying that we want to support this girl's right to education and every girl's right to education. We want to do so because we want peace in our country. Brown met with Pakistani President Zardari in September and agreed to draw a plan to put Pakistan's 5 million out-of-school girls and boys in school. He spoke with the new foreign minister and the new finance minister of Pakistan and pledged global support if they would move further and faster to achieve education for all children. Malala states that the pen is mightier than the sword and that the extremists are afraid of books and pens. By educating all children, we can tackle more than just illiteracy, but we can help eradicate terrorism as well. So let us wage a global struggle against illiteracy, poverty, and terrorism. Let us pick up. Let us pick up our books and our pens. They are our most powerful weapons. One child one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. Education is the only solution. Education first. Thank you.